Hi, I'm John Storms, and I'm going to give you just a quick tour of my uh, my F16, my Falcon F16 uh, controller design. It's not my controller design. This is just how I assembled it. So, um, in my case, I'm using the Falcons just to provide data. I'm not using to provide power. And so, there's a couple of places where things will be different, and I'll point that out. So, I put my uh, Falcon controllers in a CG, a Cable Guard 1500 enclosure. Um, and since I live in Texas and it does get warm inside the controller, what I do is I put in a fan and this is a four pin fan that connects to the board right there with that connector. And I use a, uh, bud, I think it's an IPV1115, um, vent. Um, so what I do is I just cut a hole. And one part of the vent screws on that side, the other part screws in on that side. And then I use zip ties. I drill little holes in the base there. Let's see if I can get it to focus on that. And then I just run a zip tie through and it holds it on there just nice. And I use a couple of these little sticky things to, um, to, to keep the uh, wire from catching on stuff. Then I go around with uh, hot glue and just seal up the cracks. And then sometimes I'll go around with dielectric grease if, they're, if I'm still concerned about it. Um, I also use a little dog tags to keep track of what version's running on it, but that's usually in the off season. Uh, then I have a little vent. Hang on. I got somebody knocking. What? Sure. Come on in. Okay. I got helpers. Okay. Um, and then this is... Uh, a vent so that there's airflow through the box. I mean, it's not perfect airflow, but I'm not going for perfect. I'm just going for good enough. Then also on the outside, um, I'm not trying to make it waterproof. I'm trying to make it water resistant. So I have cable glands to uh, keep, you know, keep things, mo keep most of the water out. I've got one for the power cord. And then I have these uh, pass-through Ethernet connectors for the uh for the cat5 connections and then what i do is i group up the uh, the pigtails for the pixels into five cables each um, i also like to add a little power led just so i can see that it's on uh, the only tricky thing with that is making sure that it's not visible in the show the other thing i do on the back is i drill a hole through that little guy and i just run a wire through and then i hang the controller off of that some places i have shelves uh, like underneath the house where I lay it down, but I'll use that uh, wire ring to attach it to the house. So if my shelf breaks, the controller doesn't fall. And then in the yard, I'll use that to, to hang it off a post. And then for storage, I can just hang it anywhere. So now the dog has left. In and out, in and out, in and out. And now she wants back in. Anyway, um, here I have a power supply. I'm not using a nice Meanwell one here because this is only powering this board. So I'm using this older one from, what, 2019. That's not that old. Um, <clears throat> but I, I like Meanwells because they do a, uh, they're a little bit safer and that they'll shut themselves down. But this one's literally just powering the board and I didn't want to waste it. Um, on uh, This power cord is just an old extension cord I cut. I like using the nice, thick, beefy ones. Um, like here's one I salvaged off of a bad... Um, what do you call them? Power strip. Uh, vacuum cleaners are really good for nice thick ones. And what I do is I run them and I put them into these little terminal connectors, right? Uh, for the screw down connectors on the power supply. That way it's a good clean connection and they don't, uh, they don't slide around. And then I use a uh, 12 gauge wire to run from the power supply to the actual board. Now, if you were powering, you know, using all of these, you might need two power supplies and then you would need a bigger case. But in my case, I'm just, um, I'm just powering the board through it. Sometimes uh, I'll come back and I'll rewire one of these to, uh, to power something if I, if I need to I'm in, I'm in a, and I'm in a jam. Um, this one right here is special. So since these have five each and it really doesn't fit an extra one, that means I have one port unused. And what I do is I use that one right here to power my LED. And it's just a little, little tiny LED so I can tell that it's on. So the pass-through bladders for the ethernet, I got this one for the ethernet 
And then I have this one going into serial port two, or well, maybe, it, yeah, DMX2. And I have it jumpered for Lightorama. And then I have my Lightoramas hanging off of that. Um, I do fuse my inputs. So here is an inline fuse for this input. And here's the inline fuse for the other. You see, I run the wires right through, even through there just for the space. And I'm trying to think if there's any other features here. Again, this is real basic. I don't have an expansion board. Uh, and currently, I'm not using all of the ports on any of my controllers. I just have them placed in the yard based you know, on uh, where I need them. So I still have some room to grow before I need to worry about that. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for for the design of it. Like I said, I try to keep it pretty simple. You know, fewer things to go wrong. And uh, yep, so that's uh, that's the quick tour.